Hey, Sheila, when it comes to the Hall of Fame Legends game, I don't mess around. Oh, no, I am here nice and early. I've got my spot all mapped out. And get this, this is going to be the largest gathering of Reds alumni ever. Super exciting. And something even more exciting, if you take a look up there, you can see before the game, it's going to be the Hall of Fame 2021 induction, where Marty Brenneman is making history as the first ever broadcaster to be inducted into the Reds Hall of Fame. And of course, he already is in the Baseball Hall of Fame, but this means even more to him because this is his town. You know, this is where he lives. This is his community. And there's a reason that he was the play-by-play -play announcer from 1974 to 2019, more than four decades of his life. And that's because he loves it here. It's really interesting, though, hearing about his past, though, because he actually thought he was going to go into acting. He thought he was going to go to New York and he was get going to get into theater. But instead, he decided to get into baseball, the next best thing, of course. And he said he didn't want to be a sports anchor who just appeared on camera for three minutes at 6 and 11. No, he said he wanted to be there for the games, announcing them, and he has become the voice of the Cincinnati Reds, where if you think of the Cincinnati Reds, you, Reds, you can pretty much hear Marty's voice in your head. And last night, our sports anchor, Chris Rankel, caught up with Marty. Take a listen to what he said. I made all the right decisions, and then here we are, and uh, it's, again, talking about time going by, it's almost, it'll be two years in a month that I've been I've been gone that, that's hard to believe but I think the old adage about the older you get the faster time goes by I, I truly believe that because I'm experiencing it now and it's not too late you still can get a ticket for tonight's game they cost $15 and you're not only going to get to come here tonight you're also going to get a voucher to the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame Museum and you're also going to get a ticket to the Reds Pirates game on September 20th all of that for just 15 bucks for now listen to back to the studio so fun and as soon as the game ends rosie's fireworks will light up the sky the gates at the ballpark open at six but a trainer in an emergency situation but who doesn't have who does an athletic trainer use when they need help that answer lies with a local group bob herzog has a story on how their success is helping nationwide and this athletes at risk across ohio Athletes have collapsed on playing fields, and we've brought you their stories. Like Saharius Hillman in Cleveland, whose athletic trainer was just two weeks onto the job when he collapsed. His eyes were rolled back in his head and felt he didn't have a pulse. You know, started uh, chest compressions. Every time I see him, he was at all the basketball games. I thank him, hug him, because I'm like, without you, ne you never would have known what happened. Or Bennett Hart in Fairborn, whose heart stopped. The AED shocked him twice while we were here doing CPR. Even now, I have trouble, sometimes I have trouble sleeping. Pretty lucky that I go to this school that has AEDs and athletic trainers because I wouldn't be here without them. But for every save, there's a loss. When EMS leaves and the headlines disappear, left behind is an athletic trainer who responded. That day will always be a part of me now. It's something I think about every day. During that second half, you know, I was kind of looking to, you know, some colleagues, you know, to maybe get some support. Then David got a call from an athletic trainer who was the member of a group called AT's Care. It's a group that offers support one athletic trainer to another. It was created right here in Cincinnati by Perry Denehay, an athletic trainer and retired EMT for Mason. And I had heard about a program that uses debriefing and stress management. And in taking the training for those uh, program, I realized that athletic trainers sometimes need that same type of service. So he applied those concepts and launched the initiative in 2004. We had people telling us that day um, that we had saved somebody's life uh, and it didn't feel like that to me. I was full of dread about it. We are psychological first aid. A survey by the National Athletic Trainers Association found that 82% of athletic trainers felt they were not prepared to deal with the psychological impact of catastrophic events. Once EMS, you know, rolled him away, that was the last place I wanted to be. In 2015, AT's Care became a national program to offer support during a crisis. When I heard that athletic trainers would quit the profession, and I heard from that athletic trainer feel like they were abandoned, they were told to get back to work and they weren't ready for work. And, and that's not right. AT's Care has seen how talking heals. They've also seen 
how holding in a tragedy has emotionally destroyed some in the industry. Jen Mack has been an athletic trainer in small town Ohio for more than 25 years. I had this been around years ago. I lost an athlete. Um, he was in a car accident on the way to school one morning. Very close to him, so sorry. I try to give them empathy and listen to what has affected them the most. They never show up unsolicited. They call after hearing about an event to find out how the athletic trainer is doing. A lot of them will pause and, and ask the question, you want to know about me? Just kind of talking me through my drive home and um, staying on the phone with me and, you know, offering support. Um, so that was a hard night. Just a little care, listening, and support is going a long way. Bob Herzog, Local 12 News. AT's care is free and confidential. In, a fa in fact, in Ohio, they have Ohio testimonial immunity, meaning whatever is said or heard in a session cannot be subpoenaed in court. Athletic trainers face a lot of challenges when they advocate for the health and safety of athletes. And we have covered a lot of this in our series, athletesatrisk.com. Well, Army, new COVID numbers today. Ohio surpasses more than 5,000 COVID cases for the first time since back in January, the state health department reports 5,395 new cases just today. The state has recorded more than 4,000 cases for three days in a row now. In the last three weeks, Ohio is averaging 2,902 cases each and every day. That figure jumps to 3,759 over the last seven days. And Governor Andy Beshear says Kentucky is breaking a record for COVID-19 hospital admissions every day. Today, he announced that hospitalizations in the Bluegrass State have increased every single day for the past 42 days. The figures jumped from 239 people in the hospital on July 14th to 2,074 just yesterday. Now, before the Delta variant, Kentucky's record number of COVID-19 hospitalizations was 1,817. And that was back in December. Governor Bashir was says the only way out is vaccines and wearing masks. People tell you that masks don't work. That is misinformation that kills people and mainly just gives somebody an excuse because they don't like doing it. We all do a lot of things we don't like doing. It protects you. It protects the people around you. You have to wear a seatbelt in the car. You have to have car insurance. You can't drink and drive. You know, you could argue that those are, are, are limitations on your liberty, but guess what? They protect you and they protect other people and we all do them. How about this? A new study painting a grim light on just how widespread the coronavirus was last year. It says one in three Americans had the virus by the end of the year, but less than a quarter of those cases were officially recorded. COVID testing wasn't readily available in the beginning, so the full picture of just how widespread the virus was couldn't be captured. To get exact numbers, researchers created a model that simulated virus transmission.